Mongolia is more than Genghis Khan and the Mongolian Empire. Its history spans millennia before Genghis Khan, and it also spans another millennium after him. Today, we will look at the history of Mongolia after the collapse of the empire and into today. Hello, I am your host David, and this is Eurasia. Without further ado, let's talk about the modern history of Mongolia right now. The Mongol Empire was a magnificent feat even if it were to happen today. But, like every other before it, the empire would eventually start to crumble. By the mid-1400s, Mongolia itself was fracturing. Yet, in the early 1500s, Dayan Khan would eventually reunite all of the Mongolians. Dayan Khan would be instrumental in the creation of the modern Mongolian for many reasons. For one, he would introduce Buddhism to the Mongolian people. By the mid-1600s, most Mongolians embraced Buddhism. Yet, the power void left in China by the retreating Mongols in the 1400s would be filled by the Qing dynasty, and by the early 1600s, the Qing were demanding loyalty and obedience from the Mongols. On top of this, it did not help that the last Mongol Khan, Ligdin Khan, would end up alienating most Mongolian tribes, who then chose to just submit to the Qing. Ligdin Khan would die in 1634, and by 1636, most of Inner Mongolia would submit to the Qing. More than 50 years later, in 1691, all of Mongolia would fall under Qing control, which was later named Outer Mongolia. The Qing treated Inner Mongolia like any other province in the dynasty, and by the 1700s, there were many Han and Manchu settlers in the region. However, Outer Mongolia was given autonomy and Chinese settlers were prohibited from living in Outer Mongolia. This would continue until the Qing Dynasty collapsed in 1911, and Outer Mongolia would declare its independence soon thereafter. Yet, the successor of the Qing, the Republic of China, refused to acknowledge this. After nine years of skirmishes and confusion, the Republic of China would invade Outer Mongolia. However, as the Russian Civil War was coming to an end and the White Army was quickly being defeated, they seen that they could find refuge in Mongolia. The Russian White Army would invade Outer Mongolia in 1920 and push out the Chinese. Yet, as the White Army became fully defeated, so did their governance, and soon the Chinese would creep back into Mongolia. The newly formed USSR would continue where the White Army had ended, and the Soviets and the Mongolians would push Chinese forces out of both Mongolia and some Soviet territories. By allying with the Soviet Union, Mongolia would then adopt a communist government that would continue alongside the Soviets for its entirety. There was much resistance to this, but nonetheless, much of the events that would happen in the Soviet Union would eventually find its way into Mongolia through propaganda or direct Soviet influence. Among many other things, this includes the Great Purge which would eventually reach Mongolia by the late 1920s. Nonetheless, as the Japanese invaded Manchuria in 1931, the Mongolians were relatively safe as they were protected by the Soviet sphere of influence. In World War II, the alliance between the Soviets and Mongolia proved essential, as they worked together to successfully repel any Japanese attempt at capturing Mongolia. About 40 years later, in 1990, Mongolia would peacefully transition into a democratic state. Though the transition was difficult at first, it had stabilized by the 2000s. Despite the fact that Mongolia lies between two superpowers today, this has created a general equilibrium in its relations between each since the Soviet Union's collapse. Mongolian politicians have tried to keep good relations with both Russia and China while not leaning too far to one side. And, so far, this has worked well to keep Mongolia's autonomy while also allowing both Russia and China to be satisfied with their relationship with Mongolia. Lastly, despite being between two autocratic countries, Mongolia has retained a democratic state that is usually seen as a reliable and successful democracy. All in all, the modern Mongolian state's history reflects the two powers it has been caught between. China has had a huge influence as well as Russia, but today it seems that they have the most autonomy since the days of the Mongolian Empire a millennium ago. Thanks for watching. 
Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my channel as well. And, of course, until next time, stay happy, stay humble, stay hopeful, and goodbye. <laughs>